Hello. A strength I have is that I've always known I wanted to be a counselor. I've always been very passionate about helping people, working with people, giving advice. And so I know that when it comes time for me to actually be working with clients, my, my heart and my, my mind are in the right place. Um, it's really important to me to make a positive difference for individuals. I really want to help them explore and reflect on their feelings, promote growth and change, and be, be that change agent in their life, someone they can come to for guidance and support, and they, they can feel like I'm truly invested in them. Um, because of this, I think genuineness and empathy will be strengths of mine um, and being authentic. We talk a lot about how, how you conduct yourself as a person, like in your personal life, can really relate to your, how you are professionally. And I try to uh, keep this in mind. And so when I'm working, like when I'm just work, talking with any individual, I try to always attentively listen um, and really make them feel heard and provide meaningful like feedback and insight. So that's where I think my strengths will come are my interpersonal skills and my um, true passion and um, desire for this profession. A couple of things where I, I definitely know I need to work on is my confidence with actually working with clients. Um, the only experience I've ever had so far was at the residency where we did um, practice like mock sessions. And um, as the residency progressed, I felt more and more confident with my skills and abilities. However, I still feel very anxious and a lot of like uncertainty at the thought of like actually getting to work with a client one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting. I know with time, this will become like more and more familiar and the ease will be there. Uh, it's just, I still feel out of my element in this area. What I need to remember and keep telling myself is if my intentions are in the right place and if I'm truly trying to put the client's needs first, then I know that no matter what like, I do, it'll, it'll be with the right intention to help the clients. Um, you just want to make sure you're always putting their needs first. Um, I just don't want to ever say or do the wrong thing. And I really like things to be very, um, the word I'm looking for, I like to have an outline of what to do. And with counseling, you don't really have that. Each client is so different. All their experiences are so different. You're not going to have the same outline to every client you work with. So for me, it's becoming more comfortable with having confidence in my abilities and letting that, my abilities and skills, and letting that guide me through a session instead of like having a scripted outline of like what I'm supposed to say. Um, Self-care has always been very important to me which um, in turn, I think plays a factor in how quickly burnout occurs or compassion fatigue. I know that burnout for me will like, the, war the warning signs will look um, similar to what I was saying my strengths are. I'm excited to work with clients, I'm passionate, I feel fulfilled with this work. So if I stop experiencing those feelings, then that will be signs that burnout is occurring and I need to do something, I need to change what I'm doing. Um, I really try to um, attentively listen to clients, um, make them feel truly heard, and I try really hard to empathize with what they're saying through their framework, through their reference. And so if I'm unable to do this, if I stop feeling as if I'm really relating to clients, truly listening and caring to what they're saying, um, if I'm struggling to build connections or to stay focused in sessions, then I will know that compassion fatigue is occurring because that is not normal for me to feel that way. So if I begin to be disinterested or be disengaged during a session, then um, there's definitely a problem and I need to take steps to counteract that because um, burnout, it doesn't just affect you as the counselor, it affects your clients and everything we do as counselors affects our clients. So we need to really hold ourselves to a high standards because it's not just our, ourselves that are impacted by our behavior. In um, this type of profession, all our reactions and actions have impacts on our clients and their, in turn, their actions and reactions. So we need to be very cognitive of this and make sure we're 
um, taking the appropriate measures to counteract it. For self-care for me, I, uh, I do a lot of different things. I'm an athlete, so um, exercise is very important to me. I try to make sure I'm getting physical activity in every day, even if it's just um, a walk. But I, I usually try to do more than that. Um, reading helps me relax and kind of decompress. So I make sure I do that at nighttime, even if it's just 15, 20 minutes before bed. Um, I'm really working on improving my mindfulness. I've been told lately that I kind of rush through my day. I just kind of go like from task to task to task, trying to get things done. And I really want to improve on that. Mornings are an example of this where I just kind of like rush through my morning to get my day started. And I want to become more mindful and appreciate each and every second of the things I'm doing. So I'm working on in the morning, taking five minutes to reflect on what my goals are for the day and what I want to try to accomplish and appreciating the moments instead of like rushing through them. Um, my family and friends are very important to me and are a source of my self-care. I need to make sure I'm making time to have op the opportunity to have like experiences and like, moments to spend with them. So that's another really important aspect of self-care for me is um, making sure I'm fostering and growing and continuing relationships with family and friends. What I really think I could improve on for the next few semesters in the program and moving forward is having better boundaries of self-care and um, self-care and then like my daily life. What I'm trying to say is when you're doing an online school program, it can be very difficult to separate when you're doing school or when you're doing readings or homework versus when you're giving yourself time to decompress or to relax. In a job setting, nine to five, you can typically, when you're off of work, leave that behind. Now, that's not to say you may not be thinking about it, but it is a separate area. Whereas for me, I do a lot of homework at my, at my house and at the, the kitchen table. So it's not very distinct, separate environments, my personal life and my professional life right now. One thing I try to do is set myself boundaries. So I tell myself, I'm going to do this for two hours. And then when I finish it, I'm going to let myself relax. So the problem is I'm always thinking ahead. I'm always thinking of what assignment can I do next? What can I get done to get ahead. I have a very busy um, schedule with how much we train and travel. And so it's, I'm always trying to think, okay, if we're traveling next weekend, I need to do this now. And so I'm never truly relaxing. I'm always thinking, what can I do to get ahead? And then if I don't do that, I'm sitting there in stressing out in the back of my head saying, like, I should be doing this right now. So even when I try to take that time for myself, it ends up backfiring because I spend the whole time worried about it and stressed out anyways. So my goals moving forward are to really give myself rigid boundaries to be accountable to and really hold myself accountable to not thinking ahead and not getting stressed out and not overwhelming myself with everything I still need to do. I want to tell myself from for example from like one to five on Saturday I'm going to do four hours of school work and then at, after that, I'm going to focus on myself and relaxing and um, what I need to do for my self-care to promote my positive well-being. I believe this change will really help me start to relax and feel happier overall because the past two semesters have felt a little relentless. Like when I finish one thing, I have to do another thing. If I get this done, I can't relax because there's always, there's always more to do. So I think if I try to really implement this plan, I will be able to start to create some separation for myself. And when I am completed with a task, enjoy that completion, enjoy that, that time I've made for myself, and then get rejuvenated to get the next assignment or the next thing done. So I think this will be really important to change and goal for me to really work to implement. The literature has taught me so much about self-care and the importance of it. 
one of the biggest things and what I was talking about earlier is that self-care, you don't just do it for yourself. You do it because you're working with your clients and if you're not your best self, then you can't help them become them, their best selves. Um, one of the biggest things in the literature that has caught my attention and stuck with me was a comparison to when you're on the airplane and they're going over the safety measures and they're talking about you have to put on your oxygen mask before you can put on someone else's oxygen mask. That really resonated with me in terms of why self-care is so important. We can't be expected to help our clients if we're not getting the oxygen and we need ourselves. Um, so that was very, very important to me. I also really liked in the video on um, the person as a uh, professional and personal counselor that we just recently watched for this module about there's three dimensions mind body and like spiritual and we need to take care of all three of our dimensions and I can really see for myself in terms of like the body I, I exercise I I try to be active that um, I have that but mind my mind is always thinking ahead it's always stressed out and that can wear on a person so what I want to work on is improving the mind dimension of my self-care and letting myself let go and then spiritual like I mentioned I'm trying to improve um, my self-care in terms of being mindfulness taking each moment for what it is not rushing through things um, another thing I wanted to discuss is I struggle when in the winter time because I really enjoy outdoor activities. I really like to hike, I like to bike, I like to go to the lake. And in the winters when it's really cold, you're limited to what you can do. And then it's dark and rainy and cold and dreary and the days are shorter. And I just, I definitely do not feel as happy as a person in the winter time. And so what I want to do is try to think about what I can do in the winter to improve my, um, my happiness and my well-being and my self-care. Uh, I enjoy cooking, so that could be something I could try to do more, maybe sign up for a cooking class um, and expand my horizons in that aspect. Um, but there's a variety of different things I could look into to help with the winter time, but that's something else I'm wanting to be mindful of. Also, in terms of what I've learned this semester, it's important to be aware of your own values and biases and stereotypes that we all inherently carry. So we don't um, impose those onto our clients. The worst thing you can do is impose your own values onto a client. So self-care can help improve with self-awareness. Like mindfulness is an example of this. And so I want to really take this moving forward and make sure I am becoming aware of my inherent values and biases. And so I, I, I don't impose those on the clients because that's the last thing I'd want to do is direct or impose or make a client feel as though my values are, are better than theirs. So that's another big aspect I'm taking from this class and really working on is self-awareness to ensure I'm really listening to the clients and not trying to have them see from my frame of reference. Overall, I just really embracing the concept that self-care will help me be the best me and by being the best me that I can be the best counselor um, for the clients I see which is overall what I want to do because it, it really is a passion of mine to work with people and to help them and to make positive differences. I really want to specialize in uh, disability counseling and help empower clients and promote growth and change in clients and children and families and help them be their best selves. And so through self-care and through developing myself and my skills better, I in turn will hopefully be able to help other individuals. Which is the last point I wanted to make is I really agree with what was said in the video that counseling, if you want to be a counselor, it could help to go to counseling yourself. Um, not only does it provide you a space to talk about how you're feeling and reflect and explore, but it allows you to become more in tune and aware of what it feels like to be the client. And this is something I want to engage in because I want to best understand how it feels to be a client. So when I'm working with my clients, I can relate to them um, in the best way possible. 
And so I am going to um, start partaking in counseling services on my own because I think this will help me become the best counselor I can be both by relating to clients better and by working on my own personal um, self and promoting my own well-being. Overall, I really enjoyed this class. I thought the assignments were very um, realistic and they helped me with thinking about world world stuff, practicum sites, my state's licensure requirements, mandatory reporting, um, having a professional ethics uh, or professional um, identity statement. I really enjoy assignments that are practical because as great as it is to learn all this information, I learn best by actually going out and doing it. And so that's why I'm nervous to start working with clients. And I know once I get into the group of things, that will definitely feel better. But I've learned so much theory so far, how to work with clients, the skills to use, what to do when. But until I can get out in the field and have a supervisor and get some hands-on experience of putting the theory into practice, I'm going to have this, this, these nerves and this anxiety. So I'm really looking forward to moving forward and getting some hands-on experience so I can begin to work with clients and start to make a positive difference for them. Thank you.